Okay, I'm going to go over the 10.3 quick check. So the first questions here have to do with the intermolecular forces. So we say, okay, I want an HCl molecule. Well, HCl, we know, is going to just be a molecular structure. It's going to be an H, and it's going to be bonded to a Cl. Now, because the bond there is going to be polar, and we know that because if we think about our, our these are both nonmetals, uh, chlorine is one of our strong nonmetals, uh, but hydrogen is not. So it's going to be polar. Uh, so it's going to be a dipole-dipole interaction. So we draw two of them. We draw our little uh, dotted line showing that the positive end of one molecule would be attracted to the negative end of the other molecule. So this would be a positive here. This would be negative. This would be positive. This would be negative. That's dipole-dipole interactions, which we might shorten up to DDI. Okay, next one here, if we have a water molecule, okay, well, water molecule, you know, it's also going to be water, so it's going to be a molecule, so OH and H. But this time here, it's a polar molecule, and O is one of our strong nonmetals, but H is not. So again, it's polar, so it's going to be sort of a dipole-dipole interaction. But this one here, when we have H bonded to O, when we have H bonded to F, and we have H bonded to N, that is such a polar bond that we give it a different name and it's called hydrogen bonding. So we have hydrogen bonding in this case. Uh, we begin, the oxygen end is negative, the hydrogen end is positive, so the uh, dotted line would be interaction between the H of one atom and the O of another. And this is what hydrogen bonding is, is that here's this H right here, is going to be kind of, you know, connected to this one O, but it's going to be attracted to the other O. So it kind of uh, connects those two together. Okay, the third one is CO2 molecules. And the CO2 molecule, then, you know, we could draw that. And we see that, you know, the C and the O. Um, it is a polar bond, but because, you know, it's polar this way and polar this way, they're going to cancel out, so it's a nonpolar molecule. So nonpolar molecules will be attracted to other nonpolar molecules by London dispersion forces. Okay, types of solids. If we look at these, KCl, we have to recognize that that's ionic because it's K plus and Cl minus. So it's an ionic solid and therefore held together with ionic bonds. You see HF. Now that's a little bit confusing because you might say, oh, that's H plus and F minus, but acids are a special case. Acids are always molecular, okay, and in this case, the H and F, that is a, um, one of our three cases of hydrogen bonding. So we're going to see that as hydrogen bonding, a uh, very extra strong dipole-dipole. Okay, bromine, that is also a molecule, Br2, and every time we have a diatomic molecule, Okay, then it's London dispersion forces because it has to be nonpolar because you have the same atom bonding to itself. Platinum, we recognize that as a metal, so it would be metallic bonding, very easy. SCL, SCL, you might want to have to say, okay, well, I know that S, you know, can make two bonds and it would bond to the chlorine, sort of like a water molecule almost, you know, a little bent molecule, and so it's going to be molecular and the S and the Cl, the Cl is one of our four strong nonmetals, and the sulfur is not, so it's going to be polar, and it's going to be a dipole-dipole interaction. Okay, SiO2 is one of the ones we recognize. We have carbon is diamond, carbon is graphite, SiO2. Those are our covalent network solids held together with covalent bonds. Okay, third question. Identify the type of solid just from the information. So it says elemental boron is extremely hard, that's a clue. Nearly as hard as diamond, that's a major clue. Very high melting point, and it's a poor conductor. So that's just, you know, a covalent network solid. That's a description of a covalent network solid. Okay, next one here, valence electrons are delocalized, which means they're not stuck in on any one atom. They move all over the place, and that's a description of a metal. And this is where we used to talk about the sea of electrons. Okay, the last ones here, interparticle forces. Okay, if I have a crystal of sodium chloride, a crystal of sodium chloride, we know that that is ionic, and it's going to have ionic interactions between each of the positives and negatives and positives and negatives in our crystal structure. 
In a diamond, diamond is one of our covalent network solids. Each of the carbon atoms there is held together with covalent bonds. Okay, and butane. So butane, we have to remember what butane is, and we know that butane is four uh, carbons, you know, surrounded by hydrogens, so C4H10. That's going to be a nice nonpolar molecule, carbons and hydrogens. So that's London dispersion forces. Okay, between water molecules and ice. Okay, we know water molecules. Okay, they're going to be doing hydrogen bonding in between them. So now if it said within the water molecules, we'd be talking about covalent bonds, but we're talking about between the molecules, so that's hydrogen bonding. Okay, two strands of the double helix DNA. We should just know that it's hydrogen bonding that holds uh, DNA molecules, you know, the two halves of the DNA molecules together. Okay, CO2. Here we have CO2 again. Okay, nonpolar molecule. Nonpolar molecule is going to be London dispersion forces. Okay, HCl. We saw that above. Okay, HCl is a molecule, and it's a polar molecule, so it's going to be dipole-dipole interactions. And anytime we have a metal, it's going to be metal metallic uh, interactions, and that's 10.3.